Hello, Taurus viewers. Sorry, I was away for a while working at, I was working a lot of my other job, but I am back now. And as always, whenever you want a private reading from me, just send me an email. My email is right below in the description box below this video. Um, please comment, like, share, subscribe if it resonates. Let's see what's going on with you guys. So, Taurus viewers, soulmate, past life connection, soul contract. Hidden truth, true love, potential life partner, willpower, strength, and confidence, nostalgia, and longing. Please give my camera just a minute to adjust. It usually does that as I'm pulling the cards out. Hesitation and mixed feelings. Anger and miscommunication, happiness, warmth, and light, risk, reward, bold gesture, choosing love over fear, reconciliation, traps, blocks, tied up, fast moving energy, sudden turn of events, open, honest communication, message, fear of commitment. Overthinking, overanalyzing, self-sabotaging. I feel like this person is still in their head about this connection. I kind of feel like this is a type of person where they had to come to these conclusions on their own. I feel like this is someone that's maybe, I don't know if stubborn is the right word. I don't know if it's stubborn or opinionated. It just seems like... Like, you tried to reveal the nature of the connection to this person before. Maybe, you know, past life connection, soulmate connection. You tried to kind of reveal that to them. And I think they just didn't get it. I feel like it's something that they had to go on. They had to go on their own path. They had to learn things the hard way. They had to discover this hidden truth for themselves. And they're realizing that there is, you know, this is a potential life partner. That they're, they're realizing that there is love in front of them. I don't even know if you're going to want them back, though, at this point. But I feel like, you know, they're, it's almost somebody that the, relies on you and is dependent on you until they're forced not to be. Kind of like a baby bird being pushed out of the nest. Like they, they fly when they have to fly. You know, it's that kind of energy. It's like this person was dependent on you. You were the one convincing them. You were the one telling them this is a past life connection, a soulmate connection. You were the one trying to break them down and get through to them. You were the one trying to nurture them. You were the one trying to get them on their path. And I think at a, at a certain point, you, you had to step back and say, you know what, you go on whatever path you want to go down. And it might not have been the path you wanted for them. It might have been darker than you expected, but I feel like it, it ended up being a blessing in disguise because it's actually revealed this hidden truth. They they had to discover it on their own. I just feel like this is the type of person that's just very, I don't know, stubborn, set in their ways. Like just someone that has to, this is someone that's very logical. This is like someone that probably, you know, doesn't, um, doesn't believe in like psychic stuff or, or isn't very open to it. You know, like they're somewhat open, but like a big part of them does is doesn't really believe in it. Like they won't, they only believe in things that they can touch and see and feel. You know, evidence, things that are right in front of their their face. This person doesn't have a whole lot of faith, and I feel like you're kind of the opposite of them. Like you guys balanced each other out, or they were more logical about everything, and they wanted you know scientific proof or whatever. And you, you know, you have faith. You're strong in your faith. You're you're more connected to your mo emotions and your intuition. But I feel like that caused disagreements between you two. And so, you know, as, as many times as you told them, like, hey, this is a past life connection, a soulmate connection, like open your mind, open your heart up. It's like they just they needed proof. They needed to, they needed to learn things the hard way. They needed to go down their own own path, even if that that path was darker than what you hoped for for them. But but like I said, it revealed a hidden truth to them. It may be, maybe multiple hidden truths and epiphanies. And one of those truths is that you are a potential life partner. And like I said, it's like a baby bird being kicked out of the nest. They don't have, it's like they relied, how do I explain it? It's almost like they piggybacked on your faith. Like you had enough faith for both of them. You know, you had faith in, in the relationship, in them, in, 
you know, they, they didn't have that faith in themselves. They didn't have that faith in love. They're more, they're, they're more 3D and you're more 5D. And so I feel like, you know, now that they don't have that, they can't piggyback on your faith anymore. That, you, you know, you, 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 you took your faith back. You're, you're not fighting for this anymore. And so now they have no choice but to be, you know, strong and confident and, you know, summon their willpower because they're nostalgic and they miss you. I feel like there's there's hesitation and mixed feelings here because there might have been miscommunication or an argument between you two. Um, just difference, difference in opinions, differences in communication style even. But I do feel like they do see you as their happiness, their warmth, their light. And they are wanting to take this risk towards you. Risk, reward, bold gesture, choosing love over fear. They are wanting reconciliation with you. And they are wanting to send this open, honest message. And they're wanting to do it quickly. I just feel like they keep getting stuck in their head, though. Fear of commitment and overthinking, overanalyzing, self-sabotaging. It's almost like they start writing this message out to you and then they delete it because they don't... This is someone that's too damn logical. Like they, they just get in their head and they overthink things and they overanalyze and they have to control everything and they have to be right about everything. And then they sabotage themselves. I feel like there's something that you are right about too and they have so much pride. They don't want to admit that you were right. Like it might have been something that you called them out on. You might have, you know, kind of been in their face a little bit and told them like, hey, you go down this path, it's going to end in chaos for you. And they're like, no, it's not. And it did. <laughs> you know, it was a blessing in disguise. Don't get me wrong. A lot came out of it. They really grew from it and they, they had some epiphanies come from it, but it was still probably chaotic for a lot of them. Or you told them about like the psychic nature of the world and now they're opening up to that, but they don't want to admit that. They don't want to... You know, they don't want to seem crazy or they don't want to be judged or they don't want, they just don't want to admit that you were right. It's really stupid. They, the, they don't want to admit that you are right. That's what I'm picking up from this. They're really stubborn and prideful. So it's like they've grown, but they still have a lot of, they still have a ways to go. I don't know if you're going to want this, honestly. They are wanting reconciliation with you. I am feeling that, but I just don't know if you're going to want this. I feel like you might be outgrowing this person. Like, I don't think this person's resonating with you as much as they used to. But they are, it's like they're trapping themselves. They're blocking themselves. They are trying to summon the energy to send this open, honest message to communicate. But it, it's almost like they send this message, but this person has almost narcissistic vibes a little bit. I don't know if they're a full-on narcissist, but they... They're just so prideful. It's like, ew, what is this? <laughs> but it almost feels like, like, okay, because I'm, I'm really drawn to look at open, honest communication message. It's almost like they're, they go to send the message and they realize they can't be open and honest. So they delete it and they don't know what to say. And then they try to plan it out because it's, it's like, they know that... <laughs> It's like a, for appearance's sake. They know that they were wrong and they know it's obvious that they were wrong. They know that you know that they were... I don't, <laughs> I'm confusing myself with this. They know that they were wrong. They, I think that they know that you know that they know they're wrong. <laughs> like, you, I think you know. Like, I think maybe, maybe something happened where you're just like, okay, they had to have figured it out by now. And they just, they don't want to admit it. <laughs> it could even be something else you warn them about. I mean, for a lot, it's like, it's, you know, for a lot of you, I feel like it's like, the, you know, the psychic nature of the world and, and that kind of thing, things that they were just overly logical about and they weren't open-minded to. But it could have been you warning them about someone. Maybe you warned them about a third party or you warned them about, um, you know, a drinking problem or the path they were going down. And like, if they come back into your life, it's going to be so obvious that, you know, they screwed up. <laughs> Maybe you guys even called each other on your bluffs. Like maybe, maybe you said like, oh, watch, like, okay, you go ahead and leave, but you're going to miss me. And they know if they message you, it's like, it's obvious that you won. Like, you know, it's almost like a power struggle where they're going to be like, okay, well, if I message them first, obvious, obviously like things didn't go as I planned. And it's, it's so stupid, but it's like, they go to write these messages to you and then they realize that they can't be open and honest and they, 
It's like the secret's out. Like everybody knows that this person, like this person was wrong about something, you know, there's no denying it, but they don't want it. They still, even though they've already lost whatever this was, like, even though it's obvious to everybody involved that they were wrong, they, they don't want to say it out loud. They don't want to admit to being wrong. And I feel like that's blocking them from sending a message. Honestly, though, I don't know if you want this. I'm n I would not want this. This person seems too narcissistic to me. They seem childish to me. They seem like a prideful, stubborn little baby to me, to be honest. Because this is not someone that's really in touch with their emotions. It's like someone that's very tries to be macho, but they're actually very immature and childish and very needy but they try to pretend like they're strong and they're not. You know, this person's all about appearances. I feel like you might want someone that actually genuinely carries the energy that they pretended to carry. You know, this person pretended to be in a masculine energy and this could be male or female. It could be a, a female in masculine energy too. You know, take it as it resonates. But this person pretended to be in masculine energy. They pretended to be strong and confident and sure of themselves. And I think that at some point you recognize that this person is narcissistic and childish and immature and prideful and stubborn and hard-headed and, you know, stuck in their ways and not in touch with their emotions. So I, I think that, you know, for some of you, I think that you fell in love with the appearance that this person presented. This person pretended to be all the things that you wanted in a, in a man or in a woman. This person pretended to be strong, pretended to be stable, pretended to have it together, pretended to... It's just fake. I think you, you see through that now, though. You know that that was all an act to, to get attention, to get love. I'm not feeling like this person's really capable of deep, true love. Like, I think they're capable of love, but... I don't feel like this person is, it's, it's not that they don't have emotions. It's just that they're not willing to embrace their emotions. This is someone that has the kind of macho mentality of like, oh, emotions are for girls. Emotions are for pussies. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, well, that's, that's girl shit. You know, just, just stupid. Like, it's just a stupid mentality. And so it's like, it's like, yeah, they're capable of love, but they're not, they're not in touch with their emotions. They're not balanced at all. This is someone that's trying so hard to be macho and they just look like a clown. Um, so like, yeah, I personally wouldn't want this back. I don't know. I don't know. This is what the cars wanted to talk about, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't want it. But, you know, it is something to be aware of. So you're not caught off guard that this person is, you know, they're trying to message you. Whether they do or don't, it's 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 hard because they're kind of at war with themselves. They start writing the message and then they're like, like they, they don't, I think the message that they want to send is too prideful and they know that you're just going to tell them to F off if they send that message. But at the same time, if they were to be open and honest, then it's like they have to admit defeat. They have to admit that they were wrong. They have to admit that they're the one that came crawling back to you and they don't want to do that. So they're at war with themselves. So I don't know if they're going to send a message. If they do, it's it might not be as open as you'd hope. But I think it's something to be aware of. Be aware, aware of, uh, aware of. And I know that you guys get tired of exes popping up in your readings. I'm sorry about that, but it's just the energy field. I'm just channeling what's in your energy field. So this, if you don't want this, if you collectively, if you guys don't want this anymore, it's something that you need to do the shadow work on and cut the cords. You have you have red cords astrally telepathically that connect you to soulmates and to your and you know to people that you've really loved and been close to you. And when you're really done with somebody, you have to cut those cords. Otherwise they're gonna stay in your energy field. They're gonna be able to connect with you even if you're not conscious of it. They're gonna be able to connect to you through these cords, and it's like you're blinded. You don't even see this cord right in front of you that you're holding on to. Um, but it's like you know, I think that's why I'm, I'm just explaining why these X's come back up in your reading readings because a lot of you have not cut the cords. You know, you're just like, okay, I'm moving on, but you need to to do the uncrossing work. You need to cut 
you need to cut the cords out so that this person isn't picking up on your energy and vice versa. If you're really done, you got to cut the cords and you also have to, once you cut the cords, you can't really go back to this person. You have to really block them and be done because if you guys interact again, the cords will reattach and you're going to have to cut them again. So you have to really be done and it's okay to take your time with that. It's okay. You know, do the journaling, do the shadow work, do what you need to do. But for some, I'm just saying for some of you, some of you are probably like, what the hell? Like I'm over this ex. Why are they coming back? And that's, you know, the cords are probably why they're coming back around, why they're still in your energy fields. Um, because you might, have, you might be over this person. This person's not over you. So if you really want to be done with it, you got to cut those cords and you got to block them and you got to really be done. And maybe, you know, if you guys need closure, get that closure and then move on. But, um, but yeah, let me know, please, in the comments below, because I want to do readings that you, you guys want. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to do readings that you guys are going to resonate with. So you know, you've gotten the message about cutting the cords here if you don't want this. But are, are any of you waiting for this ex still? Like, do you guys want to know about this ex? Do you want to know what they're thinking and feeling? Or do you want me to try to move on to see what, you know, what kind of new love is coming in for you guys? Please let me know because I want to make sure I can. And if I get a mix of both, then I'll try to just do both. I'll try to do both old love and new love. But I want to make sure we're all on the same page here. So please let me know what you guys would like to see. Um, in the future for these, these Taurus readings. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Please like, uh, share. There might be someone on your social media that needs to hear this, these messages. Please subscribe. Um, and let me know, just let me know, let me know what's up. And as always, if you want a private reading, I can go more in depth into this, into the old person, the new person, whatever you want to know, just send me an email. My email is dragonenchantress at awol.com. And that's right below in the description box below this video. Thanks for watching.